from Midtown Manhattan. The Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production. Made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back here live in New York City, wrapping up day two of theCUBE here, live at Big Data NYC. There's a lot of announcements happening here. We got uh, Big Data uh, NYC, which is really highlighting uh, Hadoop World, Strata Conference, uh, all the announcements, companies launching, uh, and we're here live right here in the first floor here at the Warwick, right across the street from the Hilton. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly as a wrap up. Uh, Dave, I got to say, day two, very excited. We had, we heard a lot of themes about the data platform. That's the big theme today. Yesterday we heard the story about, uh, you know, HD Insights and Microsoft getting in with Hadoop and the cloud. Um, today it's all about the data platform. A variety of different announcements. Uh, Cloudera announced their data hub, which is a data platform that builds on what Hortonworks had previously announced, a Hadoop data platform 2.0. Uh, we hear WAN Disco with the really amazing uh, continuous operation and non-stop Hadoop, that's another great message. A lot of great stories here today. I want to get your take uh, first, Dave, on day two, the conversations and what's going on in the show. Obviously, super crowded, um, not here right now. We had great guests. What's your take, Dave? Well, I think, John, we're finally starting to see the focus shift from the kind of boring infrastructure up further up the stack. And uh, while I don't necessarily, well, I'm not quite ready, uh, John and Jeff Kelly, to you know, predict that 2014 will be the year of the application, I think that we're starting to get close. Um, and it's, it's clear to me that the, the, a lot of the bottom layers of the stack are going to be commoditized, uh, and, and that's great, because that's going to enable a lot of innovation to occur up the layers of the stack. And that's going to occur in applications, and it's going to occur in, in specialty areas. Uh, there's no question in my mind that if people can solve some enterprise problems, we've seen, we're certainly seeing that in financial services, there's money to be made uh, in this market space. Uh, but I think, it's interesting, you know, you hear a lot of sort of negativity on certain business models or positive on certain businesses. To me, the services business model is a great business model. It's going to throw off a lot of cash. I like what Hortonworks is doing. Uh, and then at the other end of the spectrum, you got small little niche application players like Traceda um, that people might say, well, the market's not that big, but they're solving problems. And I think that the applications business has always been highly fragmented. Look at the apps on your phone. I mean, that is the definition of an app today. Highly, highly fragmented and the idea is to tuck in, solve problems, and grow from you know, a, a position of strength. And I think that's how the market is going to going to play out. It's very bifurcated and fragmented right now, and it's starting to come together. We also had a um, crowd chat today, Dave, a little, little flash crowd chat uh, going on. I just retweeted chat. Uh, we just had a <laughs> no, crowd, chat. crowd chat. It's a flash mob <laughs> here, but it really what it talks about the killer app. I said being email and the internet created that killer app. Everyone talked about email as that killer app on the internet. It seems to me big data obviously creating the killer app of applications and analytics in particular. Analytics is the killer app of big data. Jeff, I want to get your take on that because we heard essentially the maturization of the platform where you started to see things be decoupled, mm -hmm. highly cohesive elements around a platform. That's an operating system. That that's what we're going with the data operating system here. You're seeing that here. So what, what's your take on all this? Well, I think you're right. The killer app is analytics uh, for big data, but not necessarily, uh, or not simply analytics in the sense of making uh, analytics available to business people, business users, like we're seeing. I think that's an important part. Things we're seeing from companies like Platfora, from Datamere and others. Um, while that's critical, uh, to kind of give business users uh, the ability to investigate data, to come up with some insights to do their job better. Um, to me, the real killer application when it comes to analytics is actually essentially analytics-informed applications that actually execute some type of function. So it's not necessarily a user looking at a dashboard. It's an application automating a decision and actually executing that decision. Uh, it might be a recommendation engine that's got building on analytics in the background <laughs> that helps uh, a call center worker make the best decision in real time. Um, so for me, those are the kind of uh, killer applications that we need to see more of uh, for this really to uh, become a really mature market and really hit mainstream adoption because ultimately it's about solving business problems. Um, I think we had, uh, we, when we were speaking to Ben Haynes, CIO uh, of Box, he said, for me, big data is really about uh, solving problems. And that's, I think that's, he hit the nail on the head there. Um, in terms of the data platform, uh, it's interesting. I mean, you know, we're seeing, to me, uh, Cloudera's messaging around the enterprise data hub, I think is 
good, and I think you know. There, but I think it's more of a essentially not a not, I don't, not a marketing ploy. It's it's, it's really just a, a, a new way to say what they've been doing for a while, and what companies like HortonWorks are also guy, doing the same kind of guy, thing. Guys, I got to ask you about uh, Arun Murthy came out. He's the co-founder of HortonWorks. What did you think of his uh, his talk today on the Cube? Was that about yarn? You talked about MapReduce being just another app. Uh, in well, he's a rock star, right? I mean, here's a guy who's basically the early days of Hadoop, and he basically said, okay, we're going to take Hadoop into now just way beyond just batch. We're going to bring in all kinds of not only different, different data types, but also different data workloads. So you're seeing you know, Hadoop become the fabric for data. You know, Hadoop's the data operating system, There's a, the yarn is the fabric. So John, I mean, you've watched this from the early days. I remember when you first told me, hey Dave, there's this company, Cloud Era, Cloud Era, Cloud Era. I'm like, well, who, what's the name <laughs> of the company? Cloud Era, who are they? Dave, just watch this space. And look what happened. What's your take on all this? Well, I mean, obviously, I'm not afraid to share my opinion, but you know I like to put the vision out there. And sometimes when I see the dots connected, I have those aha moments. And one of the things for me on this uh, Hadoop world and big data NYC trip is, is, the, is, the, is the coming of age of, of Hadoop. And it's fun to watch four years. We've been president of Creation the Cube, and our, our relationship with the community was here from the beginning. And we can, we're certainly not going to go away as, as evidence here. But to me, the big thing that I'm seeing happening, and no one's connected the dots yet uh, that I've seen in the public, is that uh, the connection between the software-defined data center and big data is coming very, very quickly, meaning all the work we've seen at AWS, OpenStack, VMworld, EMC World, IBM, all the top vendors, if you look at what they're doing and how, how they're transforming their converged infrastructure offerings under the, under the hood, the engine of innovation, the innovation strategy of those big guys, the software-defined data center is the top conversation. It's probably one of the most important work areas and work in progress right now in the computer industry, Dave. And one of the things that Wendisco has right now is the only vendor in the big data world that I've seen that actually has that path from big data into the software-defined data center. They're talking about high availability, they talk about it nonstop Hadoop, which is continuous operations. You know, that's just marketing around, a good marketing that in, around what people care about. When they want to go scale from production environments that have been kind of test, POCs with Hadoop, financial services, oil and gas, these guys are moving quickly from in production to scale. And I think that is going to be a major hurdle that everyone has to come about is integrating in at scale into full-on operations, that's on-prem, that's hybrid cloud, that's software-defined data center. So I think WAN Disco has lighting in a bottle, and I think one of the surprises of the show is WAN Disco. Well, that's critical, I think. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues, you know, we always get asked, well, when is Hadoop going to go mainstream? It's when CIOs can feel, feel comfortable that it's not going to go down and it can support mission-critical applications in production at scale. Uh, and one of the keys there, of course, is the high availability um, along with security. So for me, those are two of the key areas. Uh, check boxes that need to be checked before. So what do you mean by mainstream? What does that mean? It means that the, the majority of workloads will be developed in, uh, in Hadoop? I mean mainstream what do you uh, mean because we'll see. Adopted by mainstream companies, adopted by the enterprise. Adopted by mainstream companies beyond simply. So right now we're seeing a lot of adoption around on the, the Fortune 100, the really big or big enterprises around the world. Of all got Hadoop at least in the, uh, in the lab, and many in production. But when we start to see medium-sized organizations, when they can deploy Hadoop and it's, it's not a, a new, uh, exciting, but a little scary technology, it's something they can feel comfortable putting in their data center just as comfortable, or maybe not quite as comfortable, but close to as comfortable of a, of a relational database. When it gets to that point where they don't have to, where they don't, the first thought isn't, uh-oh, is this going to go down? Then we'll start to cross that chasm, and, if you and, will. And two, isn't the key commercial applications that are packaged, right? Well, yes. Yeah. So there's, I think there's two things. One is some of the large enterprises are going to continue on to develop their own applications. Um, but even those organizations as well are also going to look for those packaged applications where they can put in a point solution that solves a, a pressing problem. If you can, as a vendor, if you can uh, solve a problem that is vexing for the enterprise, it's going to return, uh, it, get a good ROI, either going to make you money or save you money. And you can explain it simply. I heard somewhere uh, it, it said if you who should you invest in as a, if you're an investor in the big data space? If a vendor can't tell you very clearly and in plain English what their app does, you might want to walk away. So when you can articulate that and it's very clear what the business proposition is and the business value, I think that's when we're going to so start to I gotta see give, you know, I got to give Cloudera some props here because they, they got the whole capital market started and obviously Hortonworks, you know, within Yahoo was doing a lot of the early heavy lifting and then the Hortonworks spin out really started to make this thing explode and. And, uh, and, and as well, EMC's acquisition of, 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 of uh, Greenplum and the way in which they positioned against the, the, the cloud era, that 
help get things going as well. But the reason I'm bringing that up is the comment that you made about going mainstream. When I heard Mike Olson in 2010 describe what is Hadoop, the Hadoop 101 segment that he did in theCUBE, he was describing a radically different way of storing and processing and organizing data and handling new types of workloads by shipping code, not mm -hmm. data. Um, described the problem that Google had, how they saw the completely radically different thinking. Now, fast forward to, when was it, John? Those guys went on CNBC. I, if, if I were you know, not following this business, I would have thought he was talking about mainstream business. I couldn't tell the difference between Oracle and what he was saying. So that, that's maybe a signal that it's going mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, Enterprise Data Hub, sounds like Enterprise Data Warehouse. Well, I mean, I mean you've got to be a little careful with that, that language. Well, yeah. I mean, no, no, that's exactly what, like they're, that's, no, that's what they're going. I mean, that's clearly Cloudera. I mean, they see the platform beyond Hadoop. One of the things that's clear to Cloudera, and, and I'm really glad that you know, they just make their move. Finally, post a position. They've been down this path, so they're kind of caught in the innovator's dilemma. Do they stay pure Apache and, and, and fight that battle? They're going to just do their thing, and my prediction is Cloudera is going to continue to contribute and drive Apache Hadoop be part of that ecosystem, be leaders there, and two, but they're clearly articulating, no, no, we want to win the modern data warehouse. The data hub is basically the modern data warehouse. They want that positioning, they want to be able to roll in to the market, that's their, and I believe their intention, that's not from Cloudia, that's my, my Well, help them with their names, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, it's Data Hub's pretty specific. Sounds like Data Warehouse 2.0. I mean, it's just, Data Hub, you know. well, hub and spoke. I mean, you have multiple components, there's a lot of things going on. You like so the name. I, I like the name. I mean, I like the word hub. It implies center of everything, it implies central. It applies not just central in terms of monolithic. It has, you know, hub and spoke as an architecture. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar in that sense, uh, but, it, but it's, it's, it's similar in the sense uh, because it's centralized to an EDW, but what, what's very different, however, is an EDW is essentially for reporting against data. It's not for building applications that are going to have some type of transactional quality to that application. It, that's not what an EDW is for. So this, it is different. The language might get people a little confused, but I give them credit for trying to name the category. I said earlier, it's not a marketing ploy, that's not the word I wanted to use. It's a marketing strategy to name a category and to own it. Is it a pivot? It's somewhat of a pivot. It's we've been attack. saying we've it's been attack. we've been it's saying attack. on the it's cube. Not it's not a pivot. It's not in this <laughs> Well, last night I said pivot, attacking to a buoy. <laughs> we've been saying on the well, cube. Well, look at Larry Ellison came back from down seven to one and won the That's <laughs> won the America's Cup. But it, you're like in sailing, and it's all about tacking. It's all about getting to the end game. I think Cloudera still has that same vision that we've talked at the beginning. They want to be a platform. They could have sold out earlier, and sometimes it takes a few tacks, Dave. Dave, you nailed it when, uh, at, uh, I think at the Tableau conference you talked to Amr. How is this different from uh, what Oracle wants to do? And we've said for the last two years that ultimately, Splunk. Uh, the Splunk conference, excuse me. How, at, at what point, it's, it's clear that the, the Hadoop players are going to start to infringe more and more on the enterprise data warehouse world. And you know, no, no, it's complimentary. Well, clearly, you know, even in his keynote this morning, he said clearly there's many workloads that we can move to Hadoop. We're taking that away from Zomber. the EDW. And no, no, sorry, this uh, morning Mike said that Mike, in his yeah. keynote. Um, so, you know, there's there's definitely tension here, and I think we're going to see at some point there's going to be an all-out war between the EDW I and just, the Hadoop side. I just remember well people saying, ah, oh, PCs are toys, microprocessors are toys, and they basically took over oh. the world. So, I mean, I think if, if they can compete in a little bit of way, they're going to compete in a bigger way because the economics. So, anyway, that's, that's my take. I want to thank everyone out there for watching today. I know we had a couple technical difficulties on and off. We got the, everything back on track early on this morning, so appreciate the uh, flexibility there. But also, more importantly, we want to thank the folks that participated in our crowd chat today. Um, we had MAPR participate, we had the folks from the Apache Foundation and the people in the crowd weighing in. It's crowdchat.net slash HW2013 is the, is, the, is the transcript. We're going to be going back and doing more of those this week. Guys, thanks for your commentary and uh, we'll be back tomorrow. And let's thank the sponsors as well, of course. Hortonworks yeah, and Wendisco. Hortonworks and Wendisco and MAPR, but mainly Hortonworks and Wendisco, primary sponsors for underwriting our ability to come here for the fourth straight years. We, again, theCUBE was present at creation of this big data in the Hadoop ecosystem. We're proud to be part of it and proud to continue to invest in independent open source content. We thank you for watching and uh, come back for day three tomorrow here at Hadoop World, Big Data NYC. We'll be right back tomorrow. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. The Cube is. Uh